Imagine a world where the red, barren landscape of Mars is transformed into a lush and verdant garden. A world where water flows freely, carving canyons and creating lakes and oceans. Can we achieve such a world by pouring the Earth's water onto the surface of Mars? And don't rush to say no, let's explore this possibility. All right, let's say we could magically transport all of the water on Earth to Mars. This supersized game of water pong would be crazy in both engineering and logistics. So how do we even do that? First of all, we're talking about millions and millions of gallons of water, which is no small feat. We would need some really big tanks to get all this water off the Earth. We would also have to figure out how to launch it all into space. This would require some serious rocket technology, as well as a lot of fuel. We could probably create an entire fleet of spacecraft specifically designed for the task. Just imagine that, a fleet of giant water tankers packed with tons of carefully harvested water blasting off from Earth's surface and hurtling through space at unimaginable speeds. Wouldn't that be a cool sight? Now, another way. Probably a better one would be to launch a large number of smaller missions over time, each carrying a smaller amount of water until enough of it has been transported to Mars. So, let's say we manage to do all that. What happens next? After we get to Mars, we'd need to distribute this water all across the planet. We could use a network of underground pipes or some special drones to transport the water to different locations. This is just some basic things, and as you can see, we already need a lot of planning and resources. Moreover, a crazy operation like this would require a massive coordinated effort from scientists, engineers, and space agencies all over the world. And let's not forget about the costs. No wonder that scientists don't really consider it a viable plan. But the scale of this operation isn't the only problem. Hypothetically, let's say that we figured all that out and poured the Earth's water on Mars. Now what? Well, believe it or not, it would be almost completely useless. Our main challenge will be the atmosphere and current climate of Mars. Mars is a dry desert with an atmosphere that's only about 1% as thick as Earth's. This means that any water poured onto the surface would quickly evaporate. It would be pretty hard to create a stable environment when the entire lake can go poosh in a matter of seconds. And if the water doesn't evaporate, then, on the contrary, it will turn into ice. Mars's surface temperature is well below freezing. Thin atmosphere only makes things worse. Another challenge is that Mars has a very weak magnetic field, which means it has little protection from the solar wind. Solar wind is a stream of charged particles that are constantly flowing out from the sun. These winds are pretty dangerous. They can strip away any water that's put on the Mars surface. Also, the solar radiation on Mars is much stronger than on Earth. This would make it even more difficult to maintain any liquid water there. And finally, don't forget that we also need to purify this water to remove all the bacteria before drinking it. But let's not give up. If we stay super optimistic, we can still try to solve these problems. Basically, we need to find a way to maintain liquid water in one place for a long time and make sure that it doesn't freeze or evaporate. So how do we do it? There are a few ways we can go about it. Number one, insulation. We could wrap all the water containers in insulation materials, like foam for example, or some reflective materials that can help to keep the water from freezing. Number two, heating. We could use various heaters and devices to keep the temperatures above freezing, even thermal blankets. Although this would require a lot of energy and would be a difficult task. Number three, underground reservoirs. We could dig a large hole and cover it with a transparent material to allow sunlight to pass through. This would help keep the water warm and insulated. Number four, salinity. Adding a small amount of salt or other dissolved minerals to water can lower its freezing point. Although we'll need much more salt for things like lakes, and this method isn't the most efficient. And finally, number five, building a greenhouse. We could build a greenhouse or some other structure that can trap heat and create a more Earth-like environment. This option is probably the best one. After all, a greenhouse would also help us to grow various plants or other organisms. Yay, life! 
All right, great. Let's say we've discovered some way to store water on Mars and keep it there in a liquid, lukewarm state. What now? What impact would this have on Mars? Actually, this would be great. If we were to pour all this water on Mars, it could have drastically changed the climate of this cold, red desert. First of all, we could create a so-called greenhouse effect. It's when gases in a planet's atmosphere trap heat, causing the planet's temperature to rise. And yeah, this is pretty bad for Earth, but for Mars, whose temperatures jump between 70 and negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it would be awesome. This could cause the atmosphere to thicken and lead to the melting of the polar ice caps. Wouldn't that be awesome? Mars would begin to gradually turn from a lonely desert into Earth 2.0. It also means that the planet's atmosphere will change. For example, the weather patterns. Clouds could form on Mars, rains would begin to fall. And rains, as we know, transfer water from one region to another, which would mean they could water plants if they appeared on Mars. But all of this is pure speculation. We can't be completely sure what kind of impact pouring water on the Martian surface would have on the planet's climate. Perhaps, to create this greenhouse effect, we would need much more water than what we can transport. But if despite all these challenges, we had succeeded with our mission and made Mars much warmer and moist, could life have been finally born there? Um, unfortunately, that would still be pretty unlikely. Yes, water is very important for creating life, but that's not all we need. The composition of the Martian soil isn't very conducive to supporting life. The soil is mostly made of minerals called regolith, which are composed mainly of dust, sand, and other materials that aren't very good for plants. Theoretically, we could terraform Mars. Terraforming is a gradual, slow change of the planet so that it becomes suitable for our life, but this would be a very complex, long, and costly process. Oh, and by the way, what would happen to our Earth after all that? We took quite a lot of water, didn't we? From Earth's perspective, transporting water to Mars would require an enormous amount of resources, including energy and different materials. And the amount of water we'd have to spend would be staggering. The loss of such a large amount of water from Earth's own reserves could have a significant impact on our planet especially in areas where water is already scarce. So basically, this is a really bad idea, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, it may sound interesting, but it's not a viable plan at all. It would require too many resources, too much money, and it wouldn't even be worth it. That's why scientists and space agencies don't consider this idea seriously. Besides, there are many other more realistic and achievable goals in the field of Mars exploration. For example, we can keep studying the planet's geology, atmosphere, and potential for past or present life. These studies would help us to find some resources that could support future human exploration. Overall, we need to answer many more questions about Mars before we even begin to consider colonizing it. So let's keep an eye on scientific news and updates. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.